number 50, Dragon Quest IX. One of the latest games in the series developed by Level 5, it felt more quest-driven than previous titles and also introduced online features such as a multiplayer mode. The game included a more dynamic turn-based battle system in terms of view, a customizable main character and the removal of random encounters for the first time. Number 49, Nostalgia. Nostalgia is another turn-based RPG here. It was developed by Red Entertainment, creators of the Sakura Wars games, and Matrix Software, creators of Alondra. The game is obviously a love letter to classic RPGs of the 90s, mixing fantasy elements with steampunk. Other things that stand out are the cities that are named after real cities from around the world. Pretty solid game here, definitely a hidden gem. Number 48, Rune Factory 3. Upon meeting wholesome success with the first two titles, the third game arrived to improve its gameplay mechanics and graphics. As usual, the amnesiac protagonist will meet an upbeat girl who will help him raise the town's farm. You'll be partially doing this simulation while fighting enemies in an action RPG system on dungeons and areas. Number 47, Drone Tactics. An extremely obscure strategy RPG published by Atlus. It's basically a game for beginners into the genre, but obviously aimed at kids. However, it's very good with neat controls, balanced difficulty and cool ideas. The most notorious idea is that every character controls a giant bug that is partially a mechanized of a race of insects whose world is in serious danger. So through greed-based battles against their enemies, these kids must now save this bizarre world. Number 46, Pokemon Black and White. The first versions of the fifth generation of Pokemon. A few new features were there this time, such as the triple battles and the rotation battles. Of course, the other types of battles are also there, plus several minigames and the usual rare Pokemon that's really hard to get. Number 45, this Gaia DS. It's merely a port of the original This Gaia Hour of Darkness, but it's from the PSP version, so it's a port of a port. Just like that version, it includes the multiplayer mode and the Etna alternate story. Also, the Geo Cubes and the Demon Gadgets were there as well, but it also includes some unlockable characters from This Gaia 1 and 2. Number 44, Digimon Dusk and Dawn. Just like Pokemon had done several times before, its competition found a way on the Nintendo DS to release their own parallel versions. Dawn and Dusk were the product of this. However, they're actually called Digimon Story, which means they're part of that series, not the Digimon World series. But as usual, they take place around the digital world, with the player trying to stop a mysterious phenomena occurring to the Digimon. Number 43, Children of Mana. This is the sixth main game in the Mana series, about four children trying to stop a monster invasion. Unlike previous Mana games, this is a dungeon crawler where characters delve deep into randomly generated areas or dungeons. It also featured a multiplayer campaign, and in my opinion, that's exactly where this game truly shined. Number 42, Legacy of Is, books 1 and 2. This is one of the many remakes of the original Is games, books 1 and 2. A duology that's deeply connected in terms of story, graphics, characters and gameplay, pretty much being the same game cut into two volumes. While the PSP version of this game is superior, this one added a hack feature where players could have Adol attacking with his sword instead of bumping. Yeah, definitely still a great version to play. Number 41, Final Fantasy III. A full remake of the original third entry in this legendary series. While it still respected its quest-driven nature, it gave the four main characters more personality and story to go on. For a handheld of its time, the Nintendo DS graphics of this game looked beautiful. Overall, a worthy remake for fans of the series. Number 40, Mario and Luigi Partners in Time. The second game in the series, sequel to Superstar Saga on the GBA. Now, the brothers will travel through time in search for Princess Peach. The cool feature is that you are accompanied by baby versions of Mario and Luigi, who can also partake in battle. 
It's a fun game with the usual comedic story and don't worry, no need to play its predecessor to fully understand and enjoy this one. Number 39, Etrian Odyssey. The first game in a series that's gained a little bit more attention nowadays, it's a dungeon crawler in first person where you need to draw the map with a stylus at the bottom of the screen. Your party of customized characters will participate in this adventure, all available on different classes and job systems. Don't expect this game to be friendly though, as it can be pretty hard most of the time. Number 38, The World Ends With You. I didn't really enjoy this game, but I decided to include it because I know a lot of people liked it, and since its remake on the Switch didn't do very well, most will stay with this original DS version, couldn't get into the urban modern style with half the soundtrack being far away from my musical tastes, I couldn't get into the battle system either, being a weird combination of action, turn-based and timed attacks. Yeah, not a fan, but it's here, so this one's for you all. Number 37, Dragon Quest 4. Here is another remake, the first one out of the second Dragon Quest trilogy from 4 to 6. This remake, having a more friendly gameplay, better graphics, controls and interface, makes it the best version of it to play nowadays. Number 36, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor 2. Developed by original creators of Lang Greaser and Grow Lancer, this sequel is unrelated to its predecessor in terms of story. It's a brand new conflict in Tokyo with a new cast of characters. The gameplay improved a little, but it retained the addictive elements from the first one, combining a grid-based strategy map system while going on first-person turn-based for the battles. One of the best JRPGs released on the DS. Number 35, Magical Star Sign. It's a sequel to a Japan exclusive RPG called Magical Vacation on the GBA. This one is a charming game aimed for kids about a group of students trying to find their missing teacher. To do this, they'll go around the universe but not before reuniting with each other first. A turn-based battle system compels the classic elemental features as every character is of one element. Your male or female protagonist, though, will always be light. Great game here, very easy to enjoy and get into. Number 34, Glory of Heracles. Another hidden gem like Magical Star Sign is this NDS exclusive, obviously revolving around the Greek mythology. It is the sixth game, actually, of a long time running series in Japan, but the first one ever to be localized. As far as I'm concerned, you don't need to play the others to understand this one. I love how the turn-based battles implemented correctly the use of the stylus to cast the awesome magic spells you need to attack your enemies. Number 33, Fantasy Star Zero. One of the several spin-offs in the Fantasy Star world. As usual, you create and customize your own character to eventually be a part of the Guardians. Like in its brothers Fantasy Star Online and Universe, players will secure areas, fight monsters, beat the boss, and enjoy the main story in offline mode. Honestly, it's not one of the best in the series, but it's still a treat for fans of it. Number 32, Hero Saga Leibetain Tactics. A very obscure strategy RPG where world, characters, and even speech take influence from the medieval Spain. A campaign to unravel a political plot will put you in the shoes of several characters and their platoons. During these grid-based maps, they will confront enemy platoons in a rock-paper-scissors battle system that involves different types of attacks. Overall, it's got very original and unique ideas, but that also makes it somewhat hard to get into. Number 31, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky. I chose this one over the others because it's an enhanced version of Explorers of Time and Darkness. All Mystery Dungeon games are the same, actually. They're pretty basic roguelike RPGs that put you in control of two or several Pokemon to explore randomly generated dungeons. As in any other game of its genre, they'll gain levels and items and fight on one-on-one -on -one battles in a turn-based regimen. If you aren't into roguelike games but you like Pokemon, this could be a great entry to them. Number 30, Rhapsody, a musical adventure. This is a remake of a PlayStation strategy RPG published by Atlus in the West. 
Story, characters and music barely changed, so the only thing that stands out is the battle system, because in the original it was grid based and here it's merely based on turns. It's a silly but charming story with tons of comedy about a girl who's in love with a prince, one of those many cutesy girly video games done right. Number 29. Infinite Space Infinite Space is a weird but highly unique game that combines space travel simulation, it involves a two-arc story with a time jump, micromanagement of several units on the ship, and battles that also require the use of said ship. This can be slow and tedious as you start the game, but enjoyable to an extent of understanding its mechanics, but I'd like to think this is a game you play mostly for the story and characters. Number 28. Final Fantasy IV More remakes! It's actually great, with beautiful graphics in the same style as the Final Fantasy III remake. It's just that they made this version particularly hotter than all the others, but hey, if you enjoy a good challenge, give this amazing remake a chance. Number 27. Luminous Arc A pretty simple grid-based strategy RPG for beginners, there's four games in this little series, but we only got the first two on the DS. It revolves around a group of orphans that belong to a special unit trained by the Luminous Church. Their goal is to hunt down the witches, but of course, as the story progresses, they'll soon notice nothing is what it seems. Decent story, decent characters, art style, graphics, and an isometric battle system that's pretty fun to play and easy to get into. Number 26. Mario & Luigi Bowser's Inside Story The third game in this series developed by defunct company Alpha Dream. Our plumber brothers somehow end up inside Bowser's body as miniatures, but they're gonna have to help him if they wanna get out first. Several gameplay mechanics and a variety of battle objectives are there, giving the game fresh ideas, making it more dynamic. I'm not a big fan of this series, but I gotta say this is the one I've liked the most out of the whole bunch. Number 25. Golden Sun – Dark Dawn Well, it's the black sheep that killed the series, but it's still a decent game in my opinion. You now play as the sons of the protagonists of the first two games. It looks quite good with its new 3D graphics and the overall gameplay with turn-based combat and puzzles is still there. Complaints were mostly about its outdated visuals, mechanics and nonsensical dialogue at times. I agree it's not as good as the other two, but I still think it's pretty solid. Number 24. Suikoden Tear Cries The first game in the series to be unrelated to all the others, considered as a spin-off through and through. No more war battles or duels, sadly, and a party watered down to only four combatants. Nevertheless, it's all fun, charming, with great music, nice controls, perfect difficulty and balanced gameplay. As a huge fan of Suikoden, I really like this game, and it's actually one of the very best RPGs on the DS. Number 23, Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Science. One of the many RPGs based on this iconic franchise, but also one of the very few we got. It's the usual retelling of the Saiyan invasion arc, but with a few differences to adapt to the game. What stands out is the battle system, which I thought was awesome, despite being somewhat simplistic. But I grew up with this series, and as an RPG fan, the fusion of the two was like a dream come true. Number 22. Bleach the Third Phantom Another RPG based on a popular manga is this strategy RPG. Very obscure though, as Sega did zero marketing for it, instead focusing on the fighting games. Not a fan of Bleach here, so I understood very little of the background, but the main plot was pretty self-explanatory with its two new protagonists. I really enjoy the battle mechanics here, challenging, simple to understand, and with these awesome animations during combat. Number 21. Kingdom Hearts 358 Days and a Half I guess this game is what marked the beginning of the memes, the jokes around the convoluted story of this overrated franchise. I personally enjoyed this game because I played it not long after having finished Kingdom Hearts 2, so I was curious to know more about Roxas and Organization 13, and to be able to play as most of its members certainly gave me the plus I needed. It doesn't have the best controls, but it's still playable and enjoyable. Number 20. Isuna the Unemployed Ninja 
Two games were released on the DS for this wacky heroine, but the first one is the one I play the most. Roguelike RPG where you enter a dungeon that changes every time. Not for beginners, even though it looks like one, it's pretty damn hard actually, but it's full of charisma, silliness and a very memorable main character who's, well, unemployed. Number 19, Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon. We aren't done with remakes and my personal favorite on the DS is definitely Shadow Dragon. Remake of the very first Fire Emblem ever, released originally on the Famicom only in Japan. Well, it got a remaster last year on the Switch, didn't it? Anyway, I still think this one is the best version to play. Its sequel also got a remake and it's a better game in my opinion, but it also stayed in Japan. Ugh, at least it's fan translated. Number 18, Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Speaking about remakes here of the ones of Heart and Gold for the Game Boy Color, I remember the physical versions of these games came in a neat box with a Pocky Walker. Anyway, this is a top 50 video on the Nintendo DS, so I thought some Pokemon games definitely needed to be here, even though I'm not a fan. Just know these two are among the most popular, probably for good enough reasons. Number 17, Rondo of Swords. Rondo of Swords is another highly obscure strategy RPG on the system, one that's brutally hard where you can even die easily at the tutorial. It's very different as you don't just select your enemy to attack, instead you gotta draw a line with your selected party member to perform a series of actions. Enemies will be attacked although they can sometimes block or dodge. Allies will get bonuses if they were in your selected line. Story is great here, so definitely a plus for putting up with this great game's insane difficulty. Number 16, Avalon Code. Matrix Software strikes again, now with yet another unique action RPG. The whole point of the game is to fill the Book of Prophecy by making a record of pretty much anything and anyone. For this, your male or female character will participate in several different quests to get important things recorded on it. This is a pretty good game, but let me warn you, it takes a while to really understand it and it can be somewhat slow at the beginning, but trust me, it pays off. Number 15, Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor. The first game released of the duology with a darker story than its sequel, but unrelated to it. Both games are pretty challenging, but I feel this one wins by a landslide. So missions can be utterly impossible, but the reward is good enough. All in order to keep buying demons and fusing them to get the best abilities possible. No need to mention the extremely badass soundtrack it has to keep you going with the challenge. Number 14. Atelier Annie. This is a little spin-off that went unnoticed on the Nintendo DS. It's like a pocket or in this case a handheld version of the Atelier game we never got. Except this one has its own characters and story taking place on an island. All the Atelier features are there, like the quests involving fetching, gathering, synthesizing, etc. And it's turn-based battle system that resembles the retro titles that stayed in Japan. Give this one a try, it's pretty fun despite its short appeal. Number 13, Valkyrie Profile, Covenant of the Plume. Another spin-off here, a very tough bastard with different roots and endings. Lenneth is now the antagonist as Will seeks revenge against her for taking his father to Valhalla. He'll do so with the power of the plume given to him by the goddess Hell in a very dark pact, but to make it work, he needs to sacrifice one of his allies per chapter. So if you combine this with the tactical battlefield, with the usual AP restricted system when doing combat, you get, as a result, a very, very hard game. Number 12, Dragon Quest V. The second remake of the Zenithian trilogy of Dragon Quest. This one gained a lot of popularity because Netflix produced a movie based on it. The game features a time system with character progression, meaning you'll see your protagonist grow up through the story, from when he's a little kid till he's married and has his own kid. Excellent remake here, definitely among the best RPGs on the system. Number 11, Away Shuffle Dungeon. No one noticed Miss Walker was also working on some DS titles, 
This very addictive and original game is one of them, an action RPG where you need to restore the town and its people. To do that, the protagonist will face random enemies in these puzzle areas. It makes great use of the DS dual screen because as soon as one starts shaking, you need to run to the other one so you can shift. Once it shifts, it's time to move on to the next floor. At the end of each level, you'll fight a boss in this 3D perspective, not with the best controls but still manageable with nothing too disruptive. Number 10. Solid to Robo, Red the Hunter I hope you find a way to play this excellent and overlooked game, an action RPG where you control Red, a hunter that travels around in a ship with his friend looking for adventure. I love how you can just grab any enemy and throw it around to damage it. That only adds more fun to its already great battle mechanics. I know it's very expensive, but didn't I say find a way at the beginning? Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Number 9. Final Fantasy IV Heroes of Light Nope, it's no remake or port or anything, brand new game that merely revamps the formula of the original Final Fantasy games with characters and their job system. It was developed by Matrix Software and published by Square Enix. Eh, it's a good game, especially if you like retro RPGs. A small trivia is that this game was going to have a sequel, but instead that idea evolved later into Bravely Default. Interesting, huh? Number 8. Chrono Trigger I wouldn't call this a remake, more like an enhanced port for a handheld system. Apparently the DS was a fantastic home for it, as this is how many people got to play this game. One of the most historically important JRPGs of all time, revolutionary and influential. Number 7. Sands of Destruction Wanna play a game where you control the antagonist? Well, not exactly, but I don't wanna spoil the game. Let's just say a bunch of people drag Kirill, the main character, to be a part of the end of the world. In this great RPG story written by Masato Kato, author of the Chrono Games. Number 6. Lunar Nights Lunar Nights is part of the Boktai series created by Hideo Kojima. They started on the Game Boy Advance with three games, though we only got the first two. Great action RPG here, with several gameplay mechanics and a dual protagonist feature. I think it's one of the best hidden gems on the system. Number 5. Radiant Historia A great story about a magical chronicle book that's bestowed upon a soldier in order to alter events by going back in time. A masterful battle system played in turns, but with your enemies on grids. To make your attacks efficient, you gotta work with the elements and the position of your foes. The goal is to create combos to do more damage and achieve victory. Everything is masterful here. The music, the plot, the character development, the gameplay, the graphics, and of course these battle mechanics you're seeing right now. Number 4. Blue Dragon – Awakened Shadow Blue Dragon on the 360 got two sequels. One of them was called Plus, but it's not a very good game in my opinion. The third and final game of the trilogy is much better, an action RPG where you'll play as your customizable character alongside the cast of the original game. The quest will be to find the mystery behind the disappearance of everyone's shadows as you reach a story conclusion for the intriguing universe of Blue Dragon. Number 3. Super Robot Tyson OG Saga – Endless Frontier This one is a crossover that combines an original story and characters, but it also features other guests like Cosmos from Sino Saga. It also got a sequel that stayed in Japan, but at least we got the first part of the long-running Wild Super Robot War series, although this is a standalone title. If this combat looks familiar to you, that's because it's what preceded Namco Cross Capcom on the PS2, which eventually led to Project Cross Zone. Anyway, this is a great game, don't be fooled by its comedic and sexy nature, it is also one of the best RPGs on the system. Number 2. Shin Megami Tensei Strange Journey A group of special ops is sent to investigate a spatial distortion in Antarctica, protagonists will then have to traverse really large labyrinths and dungeons to help find the cause aided by a special power to control demons to fight by his side. By entering negotiations you can try to recruit them to then fuse them and get better demons. 
It's your usual Shin Megami Tensei, but with a strong touch of originality in story and characters. Can't go wrong with this one, another must play on the DS. Number 1. Dragon Quest VI Realms of Revelation The third remake of the Zenithian trilogy, but this one was now developed by Arte Piazza, not Heartbeat. The heroes seem to have amnesia and can't remember who they were before when fighting an evil lord, so they must reunite and travel, alternating between the real world and the dream world until they connect all the dots. 